Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Fritvilt Part 1. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a child running away from someone in the snow. He has a noticeable birthmark on his face. The child's parents are doing a news interview about him. Eventually, the person chasing him buries him in the snow. There have been several reports about tourists and skiers disappearing in the snowy mountains. Many years later, a group of friends drive to the same mountains to ski. Inside the car, a woman named In Gun and a man named Mikkel are kissing passionately in backseat. The man sitting beside the couple is Tobias, and he shares a look with the Janicle in the passenger seat. Tobias inquires the couple about their relationship status, to which Ngun responds playfully. On the radio, they hear that many people are going to ski. The driver, Eirik, says to his friends that their destination is not crowded, unlike what they hear in the news. Later, they arrive at the mountain and gaze upon it. As the group is climbing up, Ngun and Janik talk about their romantic relationships, Janik opens up about her fears about moving in with Eirik, and Ingun discusses her feelings for Mikkel. Reaching the top of the mountain, they take a moment to admire the view before skiing. They're all having fun, until Tobias slips and breaks his leg. Janik quickly administers first aid. After binding Tobias' leg, they try to call from their phones, but they don't have a signal. They consider their options, which all seem inconvenient because they're in the middle of nowhere. They keep searching, and Janik spots a building down the slopes, taking Tobias to it. Time passes. Eirik checks the front door, but it's locked. He asks Janik for a pole and uses it to break a window on the second floor. Then, he goes downstairs and opens the door from the inside. They all enter the hotel. Once inside, Eirik tries to call from the telephone, which is disconnected. They set Tobias down on a table and search the hotel for items they need. Eirik breaks a pole to create a splint. Mikkel finds alcohol, while Ingun breaks a chair for firewood, and Janik searches the drawers for anything that could close the wound. Once the items are complete, Tobias drinks Pinklers with alcohol, and Janik unwraps the broken leg to clean the wound. She pours alcohol on it, and uses super glue to close the wound. After this, they let Tobias rest on the couch, placing a blanket over him. They're trying to figure out what to do next. Janik and Eirik discuss that it's best to stay for the night and leave tomorrow morning. In the meantime, the group decide to explore the hotel. Ingun makes jokes as they walk around the dark halls with a flashlight, making spooky noises and jokingly scaring Mikkel. They see broken glass from the emergency axe case in the hallway, but the axe is missing. They make their way down the cellar and find the generator. Eirik fiddles with it to turn it on. While this is happening, Janik and Tobias are upstairs, talking. Tobias shares a made-up story that makes Janik laugh, and he looks at her as if he loves her. Suddenly, they hear the front door open. Janik goes to check. When she gets there, nobody is there. She's about to close the door when she sees a figure flash by in the distance. She waves the lantern around. Seeing no one, she finally closes the door. She finds the hotel guest book, blows the dust off, and opens it up. Eirik successfully turns on the generator. The hotel lights up and music plays, startling Tobias and Janik. Ingum kisses Eirik on the cheek to commend him. She and Mikkel leave the generator room before Eirik. When Eirik leaves the room, he hears a noise and assumes it's from Ingun and Mikkel. He then rejoins Janik and Tobias upstairs. Ingun and Mikkel continue their exploration of the hotel. While doing so, Ingun smells a burnt smell. They find a door with a hole and open it. The whole room is black with destroyed furniture. She tells Mikkel what she thinks happened in the room, then notices the blood on the broken glass. Behind her, Mikkel opens a door and backs away in fear. Shortly after, Ingun approaches the open door and sees a bloody bathroom. When she enters, Mikkel scares her from behind. The door opens and closes behind them, and they laugh and kiss. Upstairs, Tobias draws a picture of himself. Janik and Eirik are talking about moving in together. Eirik assures Janik that they don't have to do it. Returning downstairs, Ingun and Mikkel make drinks for their friends. Janik opens the guest book and mentions that no one wrote about a fire. She also finds a message about the owner's missing son, which is the last entry in the book. There is a photo of a family tucked in the pages. It shows a mother and father with their son, who has a birthmark on his face. They pass the photo around. Eric asks Ingun and Mikkel about the noise he heard in the cellar, and they joke around about it. After this, they sit up in front of the fire to sleep. Mikkel finds a room for him and Ingun. They run to their room, and when they enter it, Mikkel starts kissing Ingun's neck. Downstairs, Janik and Eirik lay down together and kiss. Tobias watches and drinks, trying to fall asleep. In the hotel room, Ingun and Mikkel are kissing each other passionately. 
Mikkel tries to touch in Gunn's smelly parts, but she refuses. He sits up and gets dressed, and the two of them argue about their relationship. So Mikkel leaves Ingun alone in the room. When he was downstairs, he sees Janik and Eirik help Tobias urinate. He then plays music loudly. In the hotel room, Ingun hears something and goes to the bathroom. She turns a knob, and a showerhead releases dirty water. She senses someone come by from outside of the toilet. So she checks if there's anyone there, but sees no one. She grabs her clothes and is about to make her way out, but she drops her necklace. When she bends down, a mysterious giant man axes her from behind. Leading, she struggles to escape. She runs to the fire escape, but it won't open, so she runs down the stairs. She is near Mikkel, when the killer trips her foot with the axe. She tries to crawl up the stairs, but the killer finishes her off. Janik and the other two enter, unaware that Ingun died on the staircase next to them. Janik joins Mikkel at the bar, while Eirik sets Tobias down again. Mikkel shares his struggles with Ingun, feeling like an idiot. Upstairs, the lights in the hallway blink, and Ingun's necklace is lying in a pool of blood. The rest of them fall asleep in the hotel lobby area. The following day, Mikkel brings up breakfast to the hotel room. He knocks on the door and apologizes. Receiving no answer, he leaves the food tray in front of the door. Downstairs, Eirik is about to go to get help. Janik takes her keys and slips them into Eirik's jacket before leaving. Tobias wakes up. Eirik puts on his skiing equipment when the keys fall out of his pocket. He smiles as he puts it back in his pocket, knowing that it means Janik wants to move in together. Inside, Tobias asks Janik for more painkillers. Eirik starts walking and sees a trail of blood on the snow. Mikkel tells Janik about what he did for Ingun, and she thinks about checking on her. The lights blink, and the two go down to check the generator. Eirik follows the trail of blood and finds Ingun's dead body. He runs to it, and the killer whacks him on the head with the axe. A few moments later, Tobias wakes up again with no one with him. He calls out to his friends, but no one answers. He gets up and looks for them. In the cellar, Mikkel and Janik are trying to fix the generator. Upstairs, Tobias goes into the kitchen. Janik adds fuel to the generator, and objects fall on Mikkel. Tobias opens the pantry and looks at the jars. Mikkel and Janik find a door closed with a wooden plank. Inside, they find various items from skiers. They make fun of it at first before entering another door. They find a workroom that shows that someone has been living inside it. They find traps, chains, and nets inside. Janik is visibly getting worried. She finds a box full of newspaper clippings of the missing boy in the hotel. They notice some new items there, but the hotel closed for 30 years. In confusion and fear, they leave the room hastily. Tobias finds a can in the kitchen and attempts to open it. The door opens and closes, and he calls out again to his friends. Janik goes to Ngun's room. Mikkel checks on Tobias, but doesn't find him on the couch. Janik softly taps on the door to talk to Ngun. Downstairs, Mikkel hears a shout upstairs and follows it. Janik opens the door and finds blood all over the floor. Mikkel sees a pool of red liquid coming from the kitchen. A flood of relief rushes through him when he sees that the liquid came from a can, and Tobias is alive on the floor. He helps Tobias get up. Janik enters the kitchen and tells him about Ngun. They all go to the room. Mikkel enters it and takes Ngun's bloody necklace. Mikkel and Janik realize that there is a killer. They run to another room, locking and barricading the door. They tell Tobias about what they found in the cellar and try to think of a plan. Due to the horror, Mikkel breaks down. Outside, there seems to be a snowstorm. Mikkel shakes his leg out of nervousness, which annoys Tobias. They wonder about Eirik's whereabouts, and Mikkel hopes that Ingun is still alive. Tobias calls Mikkel an idiot, provoking Mikkel. However, Janik pulls him apart. Mikkel wants to look for Ingun, and Janik lets him go. He goes downstairs and grabs a poker to defend himself. He hears a noise upstairs and follows it, calling out Ingun's name. He slips on the spilled red liquid and hits the kitchen tools out of frustration. He opens the pantry. When he closes it, the killer axes the wall next to him. He runs away, tripping on the floor, struggling to get up. He runs out of the kitchen, jumps to the first floor, and runs outside. The killer follows him. Mikkel hides on the roof and watches the killer. The killer goes back inside after not seeing Mikkel. On the other side, Mikkel knocks on the door. Janik lets him in, and he quickly locks the door and barricades it. He pushes Tobias and Janik against the door. Tobias groans in pain. The killer bangs on the door, and the three of them scream. Mikkel tries to convince Janik to leave the injured Tobias behind when they hear footsteps going away. Janik refuses. So Mikkel goes outside through the window, running outside the tool shed. His foot gets caught in a trap. He manages to pry it off and enters the tool shed. He sees the killer approaching him, and he hides inside. 
When the killer enters the shed, he breaks out of his hiding spot and tries to leave, but the killer catches him. Then the killer breaks Mikkel's neck. The monster then looks up at Janik and Tobias. Janik and Tobias run to the kitchen, hiding in the pantry. Tobias cries. Janik tells him to stay there and memorize a label on a can. Tobias tries to tell her that he loves her, but Janik tells him that she already knows. Janik leaves the pantry and goes to the front door. She ducks down when the killer enters, dragging Mikkel's body. She goes outside to the tool shed. Tobias hears a noise, but keeps on memorizing the label. Janet grabs ski equipment inside the shed and tries to pull a sled, but it's too heavy. She cries on the ground. Then she sees something from above. She finds a shotgun. Taking it, she goes to the reception desk to find a bullet. Afterward, she returns to Tobias with a loaded gun, and they form a plan to lure the killer into the cellar. She then turns off the generator in the cellar and opens the room that they found earlier. She turns the flashlight on, looks inside the room, and sees her keys on the floor. So she takes them. She enters the killer's room, but only sees her friend's dead bodies. Stepping back, a hand grabs her foot. It's Eirik, alive but confused. Tobias finds a cutter and takes it. He signals to Janik, and she tries to pull Eirik out. But the killer is approaching, so she has to leave him. Janik hides as the killer enters the cellar. After entering, the killer takes the wooden plank with him to make him not be locked out. Janik comes out of her spot and points the shotgun at him. However, the killer turns off his flashlight, making him invisible in the dark. Janik closes the door and uses the gun to bar the door. The killer bangs on the door. Tobias is happy that their plan worked until Janik shares that Eirik is still inside. So they decide to lure the killer out again and shoot him. They remove the shotgun from the door, but the killer doesn't open it. Tobias then throws a wrench at the door and it opens. Eirik is in front. Janik shoots the killer, but the axe is Eirik from behind. Eirik falls to the ground and drops her keys. Tobias tells Janik to run and holds off the killer. He throws the shotgun at him and grabs a saw, but the killer axes his leg and kills Tobias. Janik runs to the tool shed and grabs the ski equipment. She hastily puts it on and starts to leave. However, the killer appears behind her and hits her head. Soon after, when she wakes up, she's on a sled. Her friend's bodies are on top of her, and the killer is dragging them to a crevasse. The killer looks down into the crevasse and carries the bodies to it one by one. In Gun and Mikkel go first, then Eirik. Before Tobias' turn, Janik spots the cutter in his pocket and takes it. She pushes the blade out. The killer looks back, and she pretends to be dead. When it's her turn, she stabs his shoulder with the cutter and runs to the pickaxe. She trips and crawls to it. The killer pulls her leg, but she kicks him and grabs the axe. She swings at him, but he grabs it and pushes her to the edge. He almost hits her head, but she kicks him in his balls and grabs the axe again. He goes against the axe, slowly moving Janik to the edge. Janik takes off his goggles and sees the birthmark on his face similar to the child's birthmark. She takes the pickaxe and stabs him with the other end. She stands up and continues to swing at him. The axe stinks into his chest, and he falls into the crevasse. As he falls, he recalls the day the ones who buried him in the snow are nobody but his parents. The movie ends with Janik falling to her knees on the ground, while the identity of the mysterious killer remains unsolved. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.